Donald Trump and his legal team had a very, very bad Tuesday. First, a big loss at the Supreme Court. The justices there clearing the way for the House to get Trump's tax returns. Next, tough questions about Trump's legal strategy in the Mar-a-Lago classified documents case. In that hearing, three appeals court judges all sounded skeptical of Trump's argument that a special master should be kept in place to sort through those records. Plus, a state judge in New York set a trial date for the New York Attorney General's lawsuit against the Trump Organization. That trial now scheduled for October of 2023, just in time for the presidential election. And there's more. Senator Lindsey Graham was forced to testify before the special Georgia grand jury investigating Trump's effort to reverse the 2020 results there. And the former Trump chief of staff, Mark Meadows, lost a second bid to block the January 6th committee from enforcing a subpoena for his testimony and additional records. With me now to sort through this list, our senior justice correspondent, Evan Perez, still with us, Carrie Cordero, CNN national security and legal analyst, and also joining the conversation, our CNN crime and justice reporter, Caitlin Polance. Um, where to begin? Uh, uh, let's, let's start with the taxes debate, because Trump has fought for years uh, to keep, he kept saying he was going to release, release, release. He has fought for years to keep his taxes private. Right. The House now has them. And in the Trump Organization trial, the tax trial going underway in New York right now, uh, the testimony said that he didn't pay personal income taxes for a long stretch of time. What is the significance of that? The, the Democrats lose the House in 41 days. Does, does it matter that they have these documents now? Well, I mean, they have a very short period of time in which to, to try to say what they, what they think this means as far as legislation is concerned. That's what they said this was also about, right? They said that they wanted to look at possible legislation on, um, on, on, on auditing by the, by the IRS. And it does raise some questions, right, of why this has been, what the former president says that there has been this long-running audit but we learned certainly from that uh, from that testimony yesterday that uh, going back to 2010 and, and, and years uh, afterwards, he was claiming these huge number uh, uh, sums of losses, right. uh, which meant that he didn't pay he wasn't paying uh, taxes on that on those on those on those uh, numbers, and that has become that's going to be a big part of what uh, Letitia James is going after, which is that you know essentially he was fudging numbers to avoid paying taxes. This also gives you a little bit of finality of the long arc of House power. I mean, the House is getting these tax returns after pursuing them for three years in court. And you're also seeing the end of this House Select Committee that was particularly powerful investigating their own body, an attack right. on their own body. So for them to be able to get stuff right in the nick of time before the Congress ends, it really does underline the power of Congress. And so move to the other case, the, well, the one of the other cases. Uh, this one, the Mar-a-Lago documents and the idea, the hearing, the three judges in the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals, do you need a special master? Uh, is that necessary? Uh, what is the significance if they say no? Well, the significance of this case goes far beyond this particular search, and that's why I think the Justice Department is pushing too, so hard to try to get an appellate court um, to throw out this special master. Because at its core, any individual who is the subject of investigation, who is the subject of a physical search that the FBI conducts person to a warrant obtained under probable cause from a federal judge, which is what happened in this case, each individual who ha is in that situation across the country does not get a special master appointed to their case to review the documents. And that's the arguments the Justice Department is making, is that in this case, the judge ordered the special master, gave former President Trump basically a special privilege, um, treated him differently than anybody else would be treated, and the Justice Department needs to think about all the other national security investigations and regular criminal investigations where they don't want that precedent set. And that's why I think also the 11th Circuit is open to these arguments that the Justice Department is making. Right, and the chief judge, I just want to read from it, essentially says, because Donald Trump has former president before his name, mm -hmm. other than the fact that this involves a former president, everything else about this is indistinguishable. We've got to be concerned about the precedent that we would create. That's to, right. to Carrie's point that, you know, if they come to my, my house and serve a legal search warrant, can I tie up the system for months and months fighting. Right. And but by the way, when he was president, that's exactly what he was able to do. He was successful in being able to do that, do that. And that was a big theme of the hearing yesterday. These two, uh, the two judges who previously ruled against him and even the, the judge that we were watching a lot. And two of the three, prior. I just want to jump in, two of the three are Trump appointees. Right, exactly. Uh, right. But, but what was a big theme of this was uh, Trump's legal team kept saying that they didn't want special treatment, but that's exactly what he's looking for, and that's exactly what the judge in Florida mm -hmm. gave him. And, and, and so that's the reason why I think you heard a lot of skepticism from these three judges yesterday saying, 
you know, you're not special, um, you know, after all, and so you can't expect that you're going to be treated differently, and especially because you're the one that commingled classified documents with personal items. So that's not the government's fault. And another, um, another person who fought and fought and fought, you'll notice the theme, uh, to try to refuse testifying was Lindsey Graham, who did have to go testify before the special grand jury in Fulton County, Georgia. We know from the former Secretary of State, the current Secretary of State, I'm sorry, Brad Raffensperger, who was Secretary of State back at the time in 2020, he got a call. We know about the call from Donald Trump, right? Can we find 11,000 votes, 11, votes and change? He also says he got a call from Lindsey Graham. Listen. It's just an implication that uh, uh, look hard and see how many ballots you could throw out. So how important is this testimony in the, okay, Lindsey Graham made the call. That's well documented. I think it wouldn't the question before the grand jury be, did anyone, who asked you to make that call? What materials did they give you when they asked you to make yeah. that call? Well, at this oh. point, John, though, we don't exactly know what Lindsey Graham answered. There's lots of ways he was able to decline to answer questions. And he, he was already set up by the Supreme Court. They said, you know, we're not going to block your testimony in full. You do have to show up. But he can still come back to court if he wants to. They can, the Georgia grand jury can take him to court and try and litigate these things. It takes time to work that out, especially when you have people in protected positions, um, elected officials where speech and debate, speech or debate clause, sorry, uh, related to Congress would apply around them. Um, but Graham is in a different position than Trump, right? Trump is having issues go to the Supreme Court in their last rounds, and he's getting some sort of finality now. There's a force field that's falling around him. People are testi testifying. So even if Graham doesn't give answers, there may be others who would be able to fill in the blanks that Graham is unwilling to answer to. And I think, you know, the, the other takeaway from this is that a sitting senator testified pursuant to legal process after exhausting his legal remedies, and the sky didn't fall. And so what we're seeing, whether it comes to the 11th Circuit looking at these other cases, whether it comes to the release of the tax records, or whether it comes to the fact that the senator finally did give testimony and answer questions, is that some of the other institutions, and the courts in particular, are holding them up.